In the previous video, we saw that if you have an electron that is going around the nucleus, it produces a current, and that current causes this loop, this current carrying loop, to behave like a tiny, tiny magnet or a magnetic dipole. And we saw that the magnetic dipole is given as the product of the current multiplied by the area, which gives it the unit of ampere meter square. We saw this in detail last time. And we also applied this at the atomic scale. So when we use this for the atomic scale, we derived something amazing. We saw that at the atomic scale, the magnetic moment, we changed the letter now because, you know, we want to tell that we're now dealing with the atomic scale. So not M, mu, because, you know, we want to sound cool. Okay. <laughs> All right, so anyways, mu turns out to be some constant. We call it as the gyromagnetic ratio. It's E divided by 2M. You can derive this pretty quickly. Times L. And by the way, notice that if you were to do this vectorially, then there should be a negative sign over here. And the reason for that is the current in this example is clockwise, as you can see, because the electron is a negative charge, so the current is clockwise. Uh, and therefore, the magnetic moment, if you use the right-hand rule, is actually sticking out of the screen. So in this example, the magnetic moment is out of the screen. But the angular momentum, well, the classical angular momentum, again, is given by the right-hand rule, but the angular momentum is due to clockwise rotation of the electrons. You see, when you talk about angular momentum, you don't think about the charge. You only think about the direction of the rotation, right? And so in this case, because of that, the angular momentum turns out to be, due to the clockwise rotation, if you use the right-hand rule, turns out to be inverse. So if you were to, a small detail which I skipped last time, was if you were to use the vector notation, this would be a negative sign, but it's just a small detail, that's it, okay? So it really doesn't matter much. And by the way, I also told you this, I put a subscript there saying that this is an orbital angular momentum. So this is the magnetic moment that arises due to the fact that electrons are orbiting. And once we went, when, when we used Bohr's theory, a little bit of quantum mechanics when we added to that, we were able to define this and come up with a new formula that mu must be an integral multiple of mu b. Mu b turns out to be an, a tiniest, smallest value of the magnetic moment that can ever exist. It cannot be smaller than that, at least not for atomic, uh, I mean, at least not for orbital motion. For orbital motion, that can't be true. So this is what we studied last time, okay? <clears throat> and along with that, as well, another small detail is, Electrons also have something called as a spin. So there's another magnetic moment. This is the orbital magnetic moment. There's another something called as spin magnetic moment. And don't even get me started on spin because this is purely quantum mechanical. It's impossible for me to talk about magnetic uh, electron, electron spin and the magnetic moment due to the spin, unfortunately, because it requires some deep quantum mechanics. Uh, there's no way in which we can derive that. In fact, you know what? Even this requires quantum mechanics. This formula over here also requires quantum mechanics, but it just so happens that the classical mechanics, the one that I used last time to derive it, gives us exactly the same result as the quantum mechanics. It's just one of those things. And so you know what? This is there in your syllabus, but mu due to spin? No, don't worry about that. This is beyond syllabus. And unfortunately, it turns out that most of the magnetism that we see in nature is not due to the orbital motion, but it's actually due to the spinning motion. But that's where I'm gonna stop our spin business, okay? I'm no longer gonna talk about that, even though it's a very important contender. In fact, that is the one that majorly contributes to the magnetism. It doesn't matter because we're not gonna look at magnetisms that rigorously. So forget about the spin, all right? So we're not gonna talk about the spin. So, um, <clears throat> uh, spoilers, no, not spoilers. I would say disclaimer. A disclaimer would be that, you know, whatever I've been talking about is not accurately, is not very accurate because it's not quantum. Okay, <clears throat> so long story short, the summary is electrons going around the nucleus creates a magnetic moment. So now, and, and, and that makes an atom a tiny magnet, all right? But then you should ask the most human question ever, and that should be the title of this particular episode. Why isn't everything magnetic? You see, when you start learning physics properly, you start asking the right questions. 
You see, it's wrong to ask why certain things are magnetic, but it's better and it's more accurate to ask why isn't everything magnetic? Because now you see that magnetism is one of the most fundamental, most most fundamental nature of of uh, you know atoms. And so, if every atom can be a magnet like this, then why isn't everything magnetic? And that's what I'm going to discuss now. All right, so let's investigate this. First of all, you may have already learned in chemistry that there are two kinds of atoms. Okay. The ones in which you have all the electrons paired up, so you have paired up electrons, and the ones in which you have unpaired electrons. A paired up electrons can be thought of as you have the positive core, the nucleus, and then, you know, electrons are zooming in either directions, one this way and one that way. And so because of that, their orbital angular momenta cancel out because one gets a clockwise, uh, you know, one gets a magnetic moment upwards and the other one will get a magnetic moment downwards. So you see what happens because of that? The two magnetic moments turn out to be, turn out to cancel each other out. And not only is their orbital magnetic moment cancel out, but their spin, their intrinsic spin also cancels out. I know I, I said I won't talk about spin, but remember that in chemistry you must have learned that uh, in a given orbital, the two electrons in the orbital always have opposite spin. So one spins up, the other one spins down, and that kills their magnetism. And therefore, if you have atoms which have paired up, sorry, they don't get any net magnetic moment. What a bummer. So the atoms, these atoms, don't have any permanent mu. But what about unpaired electrons? There must be some hope there. Well, if you have one or more unpaired electrons, then what can happen is the inner paired electrons might cancel out their magnetic moments, but if there's at least one unpaired electron, there will be no one to cancel out its magnetic moment, right? And because of that, won't that contribute to a net magnetic moment of the atom? And the answer is yes, they do. They do contribute. And so because of them, the entire atom gets a magnetic moment. And so these guys do have a permanent magnetic moment. So I would say, wow, that's amazing. So anything that has unpaired electrons must have, must behave like a magnet, right? Well, not so fast. That brings us to the level of solids or crystals. Or think about it this way. Suppose I have a material over here, which is made up of atoms which have unpaired electrons, okay? I can't think of any, <laughs> but let's just assume that's like that, okay? So made of unpaired electrons. Therefore, each atom would have a dipole moment. And every time I draw an arrow mark like this, I'm just showing the direction of the north and south. So you can always think of this as a tiny, tiny bar magnet. And this is the north pole and this is the south pole. Since I don't want to draw these bar magnets all the time, I just draw an arrow mark. But here's the bummer. You see, because of thermal agitation, what happens is not every atom produces the magnetic moment in the same direction. Some will produce this way, some will produce that way, some produces that way, some produce this way, and that way, and that way, and this way, and that way, and so on. And because of their entire randomness, what we see though, even if each atom had the potential to actually become magnetic, the whole material loses its magnetic property. It, it gets no magnetic dipole moment because all the in internal small, small dipole moments, they tend to cancel out. And therefore, you will see no permanent dipole moment. And that's why most materials are either made up of atoms which have paired up electrons, in which case we, could, we don't have to even talk about any magnetism. But even if the atoms have unpaired electrons, it turns out that this happens. And because of that, most material end up getting no magnetism at all. But then what happens to certain materials? What happens to magnets? I mean, how, how do magnets even work then? Well, the secret lies in iron. If you look at iron closely, using some super cool microscopes, then it turns out that inside iron, due to something called as, uh, I forgot the name of that, 
some sort of an interaction we say i think some exchange interaction or something weird okay it's pure quantum mechanical what happens is one dipole atomic dipole moment or atomic dipole actually influences its neighbor and makes it spontaneously without any anything from the outside spontaneously align itself to the same direction and that's what happens in ion and so you see unlike what you see in most other material with unpaired electrons ion uses unpaired electrons very wisely it it makes lots and lots of atoms uh, orient in a particular direction well this gives hope for ion that means all these magnetic moments could all add up and we could now get one big magnetic moment in this direction and that would make iron a magnet isn't it well no it doesn't have to be because what we see is that this directional property doesn't extend too much in fact if you go far away then you would see that there will be all the atoms aligning in a completely different direction a direction like this and so there will be a region which would now contain all the magnetic moments aligned in this direction and so you will find some regions which will have its domains aligned this way and then you would have some in which they will align this way and that way and that way so you have these regions which have magnetic moments in the same direction are called as magnetic domains so they are called as the domains and in iron you will find billions and billions of domains and inside a single domain you will find billions and billions of atoms and the shame over here is every domain might randomly orient itself canceling each other's magnetic moment and so it's still possible that the net magnetic moment total magnetic moment becomes zero this is looking really bad for magnets i mean come on universe is just a working against amplifying these magnetic magnetic dipoles so you now see how difficult it is for nature to spontaneously create magnetism or or create magnets the only way they can create magnet is if something like iron which has these domains which you don't find in other material like these guys over here you don't find them you only find them in, in certain material i'll tell you which material you find them you find them in something like iron you find them in cobalt and nickel and some other very rare earth materials for example i think i remember one more it's gadolinium okay these are and few others i think dip, dips, dysprosium or something like that anyways um these are the naturally existing elements which have the potential to become a magnet but naturally they may or may not may not be magnetic okay however if you were to somehow bring a very strong magnet nearby or better wrap a wire around that wrap a wire around this and pass a current wrap a wire and pass a current because we have seen that when you pass a current through a wire or a loop it produces an external magnetic field so if you were to produce an external magnetic field this way then you would be successful in turning all these magnetic dipoles to almost in the same direction and then what you would see i'm sorry extremely sorry for this very very bad representation but once you turn all of them then what you would see is that all the dipoles would now align themselves in exactly the same direction so that's possible all right and then we get a permanent magnet ta da that's how magnets are made or that's how magnets exist in nature so you see the long story short is in order to have magnetism we need to first have magnetism at the atomic scale but just because an atom is magnetic doesn't mean the material made up of such atoms has to be magnetic they will be randomly aligning each other and most of the time kill each other's magnetism but 
in certain cases, like iron, cobalt, nickel, gadolinium, and some other, it turns out that groups of atoms can become magnetic, you know, align themselves together and create a strong magnetic dipole moment. But even then, one group can kill out the other group's magnetism, and that kills out the total magnetism in the material. It's only when you can somehow eventually align all the groups together using some external magnetic field, that's how permanent magnets happen. And so clearly, they, you know, clearly this situation looks like, you know, there are so many ifs and buts needed. And it's for that reason, it's no wonder that every day-to-day -day life material is not magnetic. All right? So this was a very sh brief, without going into anything technical detail, this is by the way called as, I will tell you what they are called, should I tell you? Um, no, I don't want to tell you that because you know what, I'm not, talking, I'm not doing a technical video here. So I will be doing a more technical video where we'll look at each case in great detail. But this was a short video, not a short one I think. But anyway, this was, you know, a video to explain to you why, in simple terms, why isn't everything magnetic. Like I said before, I have not talked about the spin properly and so this is not a very accurate way to think about magnetism. But hey, tomorrow if someone asks you why isn't everything magnetic, or why are certain things magnetic, you can give him a short answer like this. And if you can't give them the answer, don't worry, just point them to the right direction. Point them to this video, ask them to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Stay tuned.